that's pretty fun. There we go. Okay. Cool. Your story for the last year and a half has been clearly extremely interesting and unique and has like resonated with a lot of people. But like one, one particular angle that I think like other astronomers, especially other grad students might find really interesting is like you've had this huge explosion in your social media presence. So something I'm very curious about is if you have put thought to how this impacts what you think your career journey is. I, for the longest time, have loved astronomy and always wanted to do something in astronomy that the logical next step would be to stay in academia and do the postdoc to professor route. But the more that I spend time in academia and the more I think I learn about myself, um, while that is still something I'm thinking about, that's not necessarily my number one goal. I don't think I am a great planner when it comes to things. <laughs> so like, I, I, I definitely think about the future and I think about possibilities, but I don't necessarily put all my eggs in one basket and say like, I have to do this or sure. I'm going to be unfulfilled for the rest of my life. The nitty gritty stuff is super cool on some days and then other days I'm like, I don't care about debugging my code. You're working on a book right now, right? Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean that that that's going to be a major exercise in like learning to be a writer and to like be a communicator. Again, it's sort of weird about me personally. I love having different projects that overlap but also are are separate. Yeah. And so this book thing is actually great because I mean the chapter that I'm working out back on right now is titled like stellar pulsations. That mm -hmm. name could definitely change, but it's basically like I get to talk about massive star pulsations before they explode in a really technical way. Mm -hmm. And then also in a way that I'm trying to explain it to people. And so having that overlap um, maybe will help me with my thesis, I hope. Yeah, right. Can I ask you a Beetlejuice question? Please. <laughs> so, so I know that that's sort of like your, your history, right? Like you, when you were, you were in Texas, right? Um, mm -hmm. And so you were, were you working on Beetlejuice then? Yes, I okay. was. So obviously we've gone through a big Beetlejuice episode where, yeah. I mean, unfortunately it did not explode, but, um, nope. <laughs> but it was like, it was fairly dramatic, you know, from like, the late, it late was, I mean, you could see it with your naked eye. It was yeah. crazy. There was some night where I was like, are we sure that's Beetlejuice? Cause it's <laughs> dim. You know, so talking about like your social media and your public, uh, communication of science, like, is that an area where you see like the hype around Beetlejuice? Do you think that's going to, are you going to work on Beetlejuice again? Do you think that's going to help? drive some of your research in your thesis? Yes, literally, yes. I was working on a separate project um, right before the dimming started happening. And I emailed my undergrad advisor, Craig Wheeler, and my grad advisor, Peter Nugent. And I was like, I want to do something with this. Mm -hmm. um, so now we are looking for Beetlejuice-like stars in M33. I mean, part of this is I've been doing Beetlejuice for so long that I have an affinity towards it, um, but it's really incredible to be able to do something in astronomy that you can see and see change mm -hmm. and see it with your naked eye change. Like yeah. that is wild in the field. And so that is really exciting for me. The fact that people all around the world were looking up, I think is really magical. This was so dramatic. I tweeted that I found a supernova in January and Personally, I was super excited because it was something cool that I did. Right. That said, it's not that cool of a scientific thing. <laughs> like these sure. things are found all the time and nobody cares. So it's like not that big of a deal. But for some reason, the internet picked it up, BBC picked it up. It just like got way out of control. Yeah, yeah. And I like kind of freaked out. And <laughs> I was like, I don't know what to do about this. Um like, really, this is not that cool. So when BBC contacted me, I literally emailed them back. And I was like, you guys like have to realize that this is not a big deal. And like, I'm happy to talk to you. But like, I mean, I'm just a grad student who like right. ran some code and it worked. Like, that's really all that happened. Right, right. And they were like, sure, whatever, it's fine. So anyway, I went into Peter's office and I was like, I did a thing and I think I, I, I don't know, it got out of control right. and Peter was super supportive and he was like, Oh, don't worry about it. You can talk about like how you found it and just like the cool thing that happened and it's fine. Don't worry about it. There definitely hasn't been anything negative. It's more just kind of been a silence that I'm pretty okay with, I think.
I mean, silence is acquiescence, right? Like if they exactly, yeah, exactly. No one's telling me I can't do it, so uh, keep going. That's how academia works. Like, yeah. <laughs> What's your YouTube plans? You said you just so I saw you had the drunk, you had the the drunk science, which I, I think is always a great format. And then it's you had really good... just an excuse for me to talk to people during this lockdown and like yeah. interact with other people and drink. So I, I liked your your first official video. It looked really good. You shot it very well. It looked nice. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, is this going to be part of the Seraphina Nance empire of media? Or is this, <laughs> or is this just like a... a My uh, empire. Uh, I probably will have a slightly different reach than I do on Twitter, sure. which is compelling to me as well. Um, but that said, I think I'm still just exploring. Like sure. I... I literally sat down to write a script for my first video and ended up writing a script for something completely different. I like the shorter videos mainly because I can only memorize a long enough script that yeah. I, I can't go any longer. I like being able to speak to young people and young women. Yeah. Um, I think Imogene on my Drunk Science podcast or whatever channel this last weekend said something really awesome and she was she said something like, I want to be the woman that young Imogene would have wanted to yeah. see. And that was, that really struck me and um, spoke to me. So I, I think I have a very similar goal um, where I didn't, I didn't have women that I looked up to in science when I was a little kid. And so having that be accessible, fun, um, but also talking about, you know, things that I love would be really, really cool. So that's kind of the, the general goal, I think. Well, I, for one, am very excited that another professional astronomer is on YouTube talking about the life of being an astronomer. And thank you very much for taking the time and hanging out and, uh, and sharing coffee. This is great. Yeah. Cheers. This is awesome. Cheers.